90. Нынешнее поколение модели невероятно долго по современным меркам находилось на конвейере – целых 10 лет. Кроме того, компания уже заявила, что второе поколение XC90 будет представлено осенью на автосалоне в Париже. В общем, нынешний концепт XC, конечно, не готовая к производству модель, но представление об основных дизайнерских решениях, которые будут воплощены в новом XC90, он вполне дает. Производство нынешнего XC90 началось в 2002 году, и несмотря на вполне презентабельную и оригинальную внешность, модель не соответствует современным дизайнерским тенденциям. Поэтому нынешний XC90 с концептом ороднит исключительно большая фирменная эмблема. Ни одного другого дизайнерского решения, которое бы пересекалось с современными моделями Volvo, в концепте нет. У него резкая, с очень правильными формами, головная оптика, разделенная на две части, никаких изгибов и плавных линий. На корейскую витиеватость, которой заразился, например, в последнее время Mercedes, нет даже намека. Нечто подобное сейчас в своих концептах демонстрирует немецкий Audi. В остальном все согласно современным трендам. Большая решетка радиатора, причем на концепте она вогнутая. Огромные колесные арки, массивная нижняя часть бампера с крупными подфарниками. Силуэт стремительный, с длинным капотом и скошенной крышей. Сзади невероятных размеров и формы фары, которые... Other than with the automatic shutdown startup engine system that helps conserve fuel. Other than that, when you're at a light and the engine's running, you push it, you're going to burn a lot of rubber and you're going to be tugging at the steering wheel. There's a clutch device in here. So as soon as the customer asks for an acceleration, you clutch in, you drive the compressor up, pushing the air through intercooler into the engine. At that point, the turbocharger starts to move because of the exhaust gas going through it. When you're hitting about 3,000 RPM, the turbocharger is starting to work and the control mechanism says that's enough from the compressor and it declutches. I like Volvos. Always have. They're unique. If they're not faster, then they handle better. If they don't handle better, then they're safer. If they're not safer, well, they're always safer. Styling, well, you know it's an XC60. The front end's been changed, the interior has been slightly updated, but for the most part, it really looks like the vehicle it replaces. It's what's under the hood that matters, and what's under the hood is something rather interesting because I didn't think that much horsepower and a supercharger and turbocharger would allow for good economy. I was wrong. 22 miles per gallon in the city, 30 miles per gallon highway. That's pretty damn good. You know, when you have a supercharger, it works off a pulley, so it usually saps a little bit of power. When you have a turbocharger, it has to be spooled up by exhaust. Well. <laughs> Both of those things can suck a little bit of fuel out of a vehicle, but in this case, maybe not so much. Ah! There is pretty good room in the back. But the roof is on the low side, so for those of you who want to put a sofa in here, I think you're going to be out of luck. But in terms of overall plush layout, <laughs> it's a really nice trunk. I could live back there. Listen to this. Can you hear that? That was a lane departure warning, just beeping. But before that, That was the engine spooling up all the way to about 5,500 RPM, and it, it, it sounds almost like a like a it sounds like an old Volkswagen Golf engine. The interior is a nice place to be. It always has been, and Volvo has always done good interiors, at least over the past 10 years, and this one's no exception. It's fantastic. It's pretty. Very comfortable seats, and the layout is pretty good, except there are two issues. 
little tiny, tiny, tiny buttons, which you'd think that Volvo, the safety company, wouldn't have little tiny, tiny cut buttons that are hard to see and hard to hit. And the other thing is in the center where the have that controls are and everything else, it's sitting on a beautiful looking uh, waterfall styled console. The problem with that is that it sticks out really far and it hits me in the side of my knee. Every once in a while my knee kind of jerks as if a doctor's hitting it with a small hammer. Roman has the same problem with that as well and unfortunately they haven't gotten rid of that. I mean it looks great, it's just uncomfortable for tall people who sit with their legs kind of spread. Handling is surprisingly good. So far I've taken it through the corners in and around Red Rocks and just like the Red Rocks in Colorado that I go to often. So in this case it's firm and the steering, I like the weight of it, it's, it's almost perfect, but unfortunately there's no steering feel. That's to be expected in most crossovers. And Volvo didn't disappoint. Do you hear that? That is the engine shutting off. What it does is it shuts off when I come to a full and complete stop, and it saves gasoline by just not running. That's something the Europeans are used to, and we're still kind of getting used to, and frankly, when you're at stop and go traffic, it can get a little annoying. That's not too bad. I'm around 6'1", with my big boy shoes on, and I can fit behind myself in the back seat. It's comfortable. This is all backed by the new 8-speed automatic, so the S60 provides a level of performance in a luxury sedan with a combined EPA rating of 28 miles per gallon. Looking at the interior of the S60, there are some soft materials at the touch points, such as the door panels, where there are some easy to reach controls for the driver as well as down on the left lower portion of the dash. Now there is enough chrome and aluminum found throughout the interior that's really a highlight to the performance functional design. The overall layout is straightforward, functionally simple with a focus on that driver experience that includes a digital gauge package that can be set up from the controls that are mounted on the turn signal lever as well as on the wiper lever. Now the controls on the steering wheel are for the more used functions such as the audio controls, the Bluetooth, and even the cruise control that a driver is going to use a lot more often. At the top of the center stack there's a nice 7 inch monitor that's going to provide a readout for the various systems that are mainly controlled from the manual switches down on the center stack. Now this does include the audio, the nav system, and even the rear view camera. Now the center stack does look very busy at first but it's really rather intuitive in the control layout with the familiar telephone type touchpad that controls a lot of the functions. The easy grip automatic shifter does have a sport mode so it's a quick easy right left shift to be in the manual mode. Another interesting concept on the center stack is the two dimensional icon for a passenger that makes for an easy touch for the direction that you want the climate controls to go. Now this center stack is actually a floating console design that does allow for some storage on the back side. The center console itself has a pair of cup holders as well as a 12 volt power supply that's easily hidden with a sliding tray type cover. In addition there is a nice padded armrest that serves as cover for deep storage where there's some additional media input. Moving on around the interior, we're going to see there's a nice large in the dash storage compartment as well as some storage in the door panels. Now the seats have some large stitching as well as some really nice contours and side bolstering that really gives it a performance feel as well as a nice level of comfort on a long road trip. Looking into the rear passenger area, we're going to see there's additional storage compartments in the door panel and we're going to see that this is really a nice five passenger layout. Now the back of the center console has an additional 12 volt power supply and the rear seats are, have a center console armrest type arrangement that will fold down with two drink holders as well as a small storage compartment that will open up. Now the seats themselves are a 60-40 uh, arrangement and they will fold down. But it's interesting to note that 
the release for those seat backs are 